I've adopted that position again, and you know what that means, scholar. It's right. It's time for another guide on an event. And this week, we take a look at one of the events of the World Scholars Cup that can leave many frustrated. Then again, most of them already do. But this event in particular is one that even I can struggle with, and that oftentimes scholars fret unnecessarily about. This week, we look at collaborative writing and how to succeed in collaborative writing. So what is collaborative writing? Well, collaborative writing is one of the two events that you are going to take sitting down in an auditorium with the rest of your team. The other one is the team ball. Now, we'll get onto that one later if you guys request a video on it, but for now, let's look at the event itself. So collaborative writing is one of the more academic events of the World Scholars Cup in that you probably already have some experience doing collaborative writing or at least the type of writing in a school. Now, collaborative writing is based around a debate, essentially. You're going to write down a written debate and you're going to be graded on how well your writing is in persuading the judge that your stance is correct. Now, there are traditional and creative prompts in writing. What this means is that there are going to be uh, prompts in the subject areas, six of them, that denote what you can do with it. So for example, a special area prompt might be, what would someone 800 years ago find most mysterious about our world today? Or something like that. Now that obviously depends on your knowledge of the resource and how willing you are to experiment with the format. You can choose, but the general rule of thumb is that if you know a lot about a resource, you should take that resource. Now, that doesn't mean you can't try a new one. By all means, you're free to try the science prompt if you know a lot about the science one, but you only studied special area. That's fine. But the key thing is that your team needs to maximize its score along with yourself individually. So remember, the prompt that you choose will go a long way towards the quality of your writing. The event is broken down into three stages. The first is the planning stage, and this is where you will get your writing booklet and the prompt sheet, and your team will choose a prompt, and then you have 25 to 30 minutes, depending on the round, to plan. Now, during this time, you can have your devices open, your laptops, your phones, your notes, and you can use the internet to search any facts, any points, or any sort of stories that might help back up your uh, stance on the motion. We'll talk more about that later on. Now, by no means are you isolated during this time. You can help out your peers. In fact, you should help out your peers. If you happen to just stumble upon a source that might help someone doing the history, uh, uh, history prompt, then you might share it with that person and you should share it with that person. Remember, it's named collaborative writing for a reason. You're meant to succeed as a team. You could be the best collaborative writer out there, but if you don't help out your team, that's not going to do so well in the team score, and that's what really matters here. Then we have the writing stage. This is where you put away all of your devices and you put and you start writing. No communication with teammates is allowed, uh, though you could probably make alpaca noises from time to time. I'm sure the staff will be fine with that. Uh, but you are going to be writing alone in either pen or pencil. The people prefer pen, blue or black, but if you're a bit wonky with your handwriting like I am, or you're a bit uncertain about your writing style, you can do pen so they don't really mind. It's not going to hurt your score. They just prefer pen because it's so much easier to read and to see when they do grade it. Once the writing is done, there is peer review. Now, this is a 15 minute stage, and this is where you are meant by the rules to stop writing and to give your essay to one of your teammates and they'll give theirs to yours and then you review it and you suggest minor changes, you know, grammatical errors here and there, a few flaws in the logic or the reasoning. We'll get onto that a little bit later. Now, peer review can be bent a little bit. They will still allow you to write. If you're still writing your essay and you have like two more sentences or a paragraph left, that's completely fine. Just remember that you are hurting your score if you don't take part in a peer review. And we'll talk about that as well when we get to it. Now, this goes without saying, but only one prompt is allowed per team member, and it has to be a different prompt. You can't have all three of you doing a special area prompt or two of you doing the same prompt and one of you doing a different one. No, 
you choose one prompt, the other person choose another prompt, and your third teammate will choose a different prompt than all three of you. There are six prompts. You should be comfortable enough to do at least one of them, and there should be no conflict as to which prompt people want to do. Now, they accept traditional or creative writing, and we'll get down into the differences of those later on. But essentially, traditional writing is basically what you would write in a school essay, right? Your standard five paragraphs of information, points, and facts that are going to get you good marks in a school and maybe good marks in the World Scholars Cup. Creative writing is where you sort of twist that formula to add a certain creative spin. And that's a little bit of a harder skill, but it certainly can net you higher points. Just be careful though, we'll get on to the specifics of the scoring later on. Now, individual writing, uh, what I mean by that is that you will be writing one essay on your own. People get confused when they hear collaborative writing and they think that, oh, I write one essay and my team writes, helps me write that essay. No, your team will produce three or sometimes two if you have a two member team essays. You will not produce one single essay. All of you will give your own essay, so three essays in total. If you produce only one essay, good luck scoring. So let's work with this motion for now. This, will mo this is the style of emotion that might appear in the collaborative writing. Convince your school administration to fund World Scholars Cup trips. Now let's go to some preparation tips first. Well, you've been given that motion, you've selected it, you've written down that you're doing it, and now you need to find some research on it. So, when you research, there's a simple three-step formula that I like to follow. Find facts, write down facts, use facts. Done. Now, it's not as easy as it seems, and it certainly isn't that simple. What I mean by research is basically anything that can help support your points. The first thing you need to find is obviously your points. Now, three points is ideal, but you can make two really strong points or four semi-strong points if you find a lot of evidence for it. Your introduction should be there and so should your conclusion. And this is when you make that choice. Is this a prompt where I want to do a creative one or a traditional one? And you need to use logos, ethos, and pathos. If you don't know what those are, these are the basic uh, methods of persuasion. Logos is facts, any credible information that you can use. Ethos is credibility. Having an expert testimony or a story in your introduction and conclusion or even your points is completely acceptable and it should be used. Pathos is your emotion. Your ability to evoke emotion within the judge is probably going to help you convince them that your side of the story is correct. And lastly, make it memorable. Remember, this is un unlike the actual debate, collaborative writing is graded after the day is done. At the end of the day, the World Scholars Cup staff, along with the volunteers, are going to gather all the essays, put them in one place, and they're going to take a bunch of them and read them one by one. A human is going to grade this essay. If you make an essay that every single person in the um round makes, it's going to be extremely boring and you're not going to score that well. Your essay should be memorable so that the judge remembers, hey, that's a really good essay. I'd like to score higher for that one. Because if you make it memorable, there's a high chance you're going to get a higher score and possibly win a medal or even the trophy if you're as skilled as some of the writers out there. Shout out to my teammate, or sorry, my former school teammate, Maxine. Now let's go on to some point tips. How do you fill a great writing piece? Now, points are basically what you would do in a debate, right? But they're now put into a much more formatted structure. Now your structure is your introduction, you're introducing your stance and a basic outline of what you're gonna talk about, your three points in order, in a logical order, your PO structure. Now PO stands for point, explanation, evidence, Sorry, evidence, explanation, and link. Your point is obviously what are you saying. Your evidence is the information that backs up the point. Your explanation is how the evidence links to the point, And your link is how this all links back to the motion at hand. So for example, let's look at our motion. Say you were going to mention that the World Scholars Cup is a great event. Your appeal structure would go something like this. The World Scholars Cup 
is an event that our school administration should fund because it brings together scholars of so many cultures. The evidence for this lies in the fact that at the latest global round, more than blah, 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 scholars from blah, 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 countries joined an unheard of amount in the modern day. Now, this obviously links back to the motion by saying that if our school funds this event, it will allow its students to become members of a great unified scholarly community in the making. And that's basically how a PO structure will generally go. Now, your conclusion is obviously wrapping up all your three points, summarizing them, and then saying why we should uh, fund it, right? So, for example, you might say, in conclusion, our school should put money into World Scholars Cup chips because the event is enjoyable, it is extremely rewarding to students, and it allows them to be part of a greater community, which is what schools should strive their students to be in. That's a general layout for a traditional essay. Now, remember, if you're doing a creative essay or even slightly spinning a traditional essay, this doesn't have to be followed. But first, what are points made of? This is exactly what you would in doing a debate, right? There's logical reasoning. There's solid facts. Why do these facts matter? And you can toss some emotion in there, right? Sometimes you won't be able to find a fact for a motion. So what you're going to have to do is just make up a story or an anecdote or say, you know, imagine a world where that's a great tactic because it puts some pathos, some emotion into the judge and makes them really consider uh, what you're trying to say. Now, can we do a talk about rebuttals in your writing? Some advanced writers might say that they do rebut it in your writing. And rebutting in writing is pretty easy. You just go, now while naysayers or now while the negative side might say that blah, 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 we can counter this by saying that whatever. If you can put rebuttals in your writing, that's completely fine. But you don't have to, right? You can still score pretty high if you don't. What you have to remember is that if you do put a rebuttal in your writing, it's going to take a lot more time for you to write. And that might cut into your peer review session, which is very important. Now, here are some possible creative structures, right? A story, a letter, a memoir, a dialogue, a play script, or even a slightly spiced up traditional. What my teammate does, what my teammate Sid likes to do with his traditional essays is that he makes the introduction more memorable and he makes it more creative. His introduction is basically imagining a world where the motion is false. So, for example, he says, imagine a world where the World Scholars Cup didn't exist because schools weren't funding their trips. A world without a culturally enriching academic program, a world without enrichment of scholars, and a world without a base to build upon for future generations. Something like that is still pretty creative, and yet the rest of his essays are traditional, and he still scores very high. Trust me. Creative is not recommended for first-timers, though. If you're a first-timer to the World Scholars Cup and you've only ever written traditional school essays, stick to that for now, and then later on you can sort of branch out slowly and make your own essay style, sort of. Now, if you are an avid writer and you like to write stories or you like to write news articles or anything that's not necessarily traditional, you can probably try creative on your first time and you'll be fine. Just remember, though, creative is risky. In regionals, the creative writing is very, very popular, and it's even more so in globals and TLC. A really well done creative essay is going to score much higher than a really well done traditional essay, but an adequate creative essay is going to actually score less than an adequate, or at least the same amount as an adequate traditional essay. It, you have to assess yourself, right? Many people are going to write a creative, especially if the prompt allows for it. Now, here are some feedback tips. Let's go on to that key session I talked about, the peer review session. During the peer review session, you and your teammates can use this time to still write, right? Maybe you have a few more sentences to go or you just need to put in one more fact and that's completely fine. Ideally, you should not be writing for the entire 15 minutes. That is a no-no. If you write for the entire 15 minutes, you are not going to get crucial feedback to improve your essay in that short amount of time. 
Now, during feedback, you need to focus on all aspects, right? The grammar, does it make sense? The points, are they logical? The evidence, is it credible? The logic, is it flawed? And the emotion, is it present? Those are the key questions you need to ask when you're grading your teammates' essays and your teammate is grading your essay. You need to tell your teammates, hey, I think you could uh, add something here or I don't really get this logic. Maybe you want to adjust it a little bit. And that's fine because remember, you're building as a team, not as an individual. Yes, you will be getting high scores as an individual if you do well. But if you don't help out your teammates, they're not going to do well in the team events. And that's really a huge part of the World Scholars Cup achievements. With that, guys, we end this week's video and our guide on collaborative writing. Remember to comment down below on what videos you'd like to see next week, which I hope will be a release date because I am on holiday next week. Woo! Uh, but if not, I will probably try and make up for it by posting two videos next next week. But we'll see, right? So remember to comment down below, uh, press the like button and subscribe. Insert cringy YouTuber meme here. Until next time, this is Avon Fata, Avon Explains, signing out.